know, 50 minutes. <laughs> you, you can start. Okay. Um, today is Wednesday, July 14th, 2010. I'm Kathy Bernstein, and I'm talking with Idy Goodman as part of the uh, Oral History Video Project of the Jewish Museum Milwaukee. Thanks for coming in, Idy. You're welcome. Um, I would like to start out by finding out a little something about you. We were talking before, and I really don't know where were you born, where did you come from, how did you meet your husband, a and then we wanted, I want to find out about um, uh, your family and those questions okay. I think you recall. So go ahead, just tell us, you know, tell us about you. Oh my goodness. Okay, I was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I'm one of three children. I'm a middle child. No. Okay, I have an older sister and a younger brother. Uh, my parents, my father came over from Russia, Poland. So I guess that makes me first generation American on his side, mm -hmm. which is amazing. And um, all my grandparents came from Eastern Europe. Um, my parents. My father was in the grocery business, and um, my mother was very, and both of them were active in the community. In what way? Well, they both were involved with the synagogue. My mother was president of the sisterhood. My father was involved in the Masons, or the, the Kiwanis, or one. He had one of these hats in the closet. You know, like you one of these fez, little red little like fez, fez hats. That's the Masons. Yeah, the Masons, okay. And then when he died, I found some Mason information in his top drawers, like mm -hmm. the little compass thing. I thought, my goodness. Uh -huh. So that, you know, that's some exciting history I'd like to look into. The Masons. But um, very good people. My mother was really highly involved in National Council of Jewish Women in Pittsburgh. She eventually became president of the Pittsburgh section. And my Uncle Jack, on the Rakuzin side, which is my mother's side, said that all the Rakuzins are involved in public life. Is you know? Rakuzin, is that uh, like the matzo Rakuzin? Are you related? I have no idea. It was as an adult that I found the Rakuzin matzo, and I don't know anything about that. But it's how common is that name? Not very. Not very, so. No. What yeah. kind of, uh, what synagogue did you, what? Uh, we belong to a reform synagogue, mm -hmm. Sinai in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. It was a large synagogue. Yep. So tell me about your, your growing... Uh, by the way, did you know your grandparents? I mean, were you close to them? My, both my grandmothers died before I was born, oh. and so I didn't know them, but I have, I have a really rich imagination, so I've imagined some history about them, <laughs> <laughs> that I make up stories in my head but I never knew them. Um, I knew both my grandfathers, and they di both died when I was an adult. Mm -hmm. yeah. why, what, um, why, what did your grandmothers die of? It's I unusual, I think, for women to go. Oh, I think they both had coronary disease and oh, strokes, mm -hmm. high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. You said your father was in the grocery bill, uh, business. He had a grocery store or a chain, or, or, and did your mother work with him? or? Um, when my grandfather, Joe, Joseph Porter, came over from Russia, he came and didn't bring the family over for nine years. So my father and his brother, Uncle Al, came with their mother and grand, my great-grandmother when my father, father was about eight or nine or ten years old. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, they had sketchy communication because there were pogroms and things happening in Poland. And my grandfather, along with some of his friends who he came over on the boat with and also met in Pittsburgh, started a grocery company. It's a long history, but eventually mm -hmm. it turned into a chain of grocery stores in the Pittsburgh area. It's, now it's an extremely successful company. What's the name of it? Giant Eagle. Giant Eagle. Eagle. Eagle? Eagle. Eagle. That, that's the Pittsburgh L. Oh. Eagle. Oh, Eagle. 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 That's the I thought it was we a swallow. giant eagle. I know, a giant <laughs> ego, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so there were five families who were in that business, and it's somewhat qua a quasi-family business still. Uh -huh. It is still. Yes, my uh -huh. brother's involved in it, and the other five families, plus now there's some Absolute outside people mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. 
What was uh, uh, growing up in Pittsburgh? Um, you belonged to a, a Reformed synagogue. Were you, as you got older, were you involved? Did you know? Did you were you a joiner? What uh, what kind of a girlhood did you have? And okay, um, what kind of job? In terms of the synagogue, I went to Sunday school and I went to Hebrew school, and eventually I taught, you know, or was an assistant teacher in the Sunday school. But I don't have a lot of memories there. I didn't have an affinity for the rabbi. He was the kind of rabbi who would get up in front of the congregation on the high holidays, all bedecked in white, and he would stand there, like you know, like how do how do they do the priests, mm -hmm. you know, like doing mm -hmm. the priests. Right. And he he had a button on the floor, so that he would do this, and the ark would open, oh. as if he had the power. It just <laughs> oh. was like. You know, it just didn't oh, do a that's lot for me. Wonderful. 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 <laughs> that is yes. amazing. I never yes. heard of such it's, a thing. I know. It was pretty ridiculous. Did he speak in pear shaped tones? <laughs> yes, he did. Of course, because yes. that was the way they were trained in those <laughs> right. days to be yeah. very dramatic. Yeah. yeah, it was like, um, I. You know, the word that comes to my mind is awesome, but it's the it's awesome in a kind of ridiculous way. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, so I didn't attach to Judaism at that time of my life. Okay. And then I sort of was involved with Pafti, Pennsylvania. Temple Youth. Temple Youth. Mm -hmm. And I went to one thing. In fact, the one retreat I went to was the day... Um, John, Ted, um, John Kennedy was assassinated. Right. It was that weekend, mm -hmm. and I, what am I doing here? Right. You know, right. so that was terrible. And it, actually, it ended early, mm -hmm. after Oswald was murdered. You mm -hmm. know, we were all sent home. Mm -hmm. But uh, BBYO or any of any no, of stuff now? No, no. Um, <laughs> our high school. I, I'm putting this on tape. This is a little embarrassing. Had high school sororities. No, no, that's not that. They were here too. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, God. So um, I was in Gal. I have no idea what that meant. I didn't have Greek letters associated with it, and I ended up being president. And what's interesting is my sister was president of SOP. Gal and SOP. Gal, and Gal. I know, which is crazy. That is. No, Milwaukee had them, and we have a picture um, of uh, a sorority up in the museum with Elena Pell and some of those people. Really? Like oh, I'm, I'm much how comforted. Long, how long did that last? Because it was like uh, the ins and the outs. If you weren't popular, am I correct? How did, was, were all the girls in a sorority? You don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And our high school was highly Jewish, and a lot of the Jewish girls were in these sororities, and we met at the... Um, Ike's, the Iron Kaufman Center, which is the precursor to the JCC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, we, and we, our colors were pink and black. Mm -hmm. I wonder, <laughs> so was it a, a JC or an Ira Kaufman sponsored thing or, or through the school? How was this? Do you you know, I went through life not knowing anything. I just sort of flowed into various things. Okay, so you went to high school, you, you, you were or bat mitzvah, con confirm, no. No? no? no, my cousin Bobby was, became a bat mitzvah, oh, and it was were. extremely rare for young girls to become a bat mitzvah, and so she did, and she belonged to a conservative synagogue. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, Joe, actually was one of the founders of that synagogue, mm -hmm. and I believe my parents were maybe one of the founders of this reform synagogue. Mm -hmm. What's your happiest memory from that time of being a a girl, a teenager, living at home, let's say. The woods behind the house. Yeah, what, what? We lived with Frick Park behind our house, so it looked like our house was acres and acres. Mm -hmm. And so I'd go down the hill, and at the, there was a grassy hill. My mother had a garden where she grew her tomatoes and her rhubarb. Mm -hmm. My grandmother had a fabulous garden, and we now have a wonderful garden. Mm -hmm. And my daughter is in sustainable agriculture, so maybe that's through the bloodline, too. I think so. But um, at the end of the grassy area, there was a woods and there was a creek, and I would spend days in the woods. I just, by myself, sometimes with friends. Mm -hmm. I just loved the woods. When you, um, when you got out of high school, what, what, uh, what did you do? I ended up going to the University of Wisconsin, Madison. Why Madison? 
I knew you were going to ask that. Do you remember when I said I just sort of slid into things? Yeah. I don't remember why I applied to where I applied. I think I must have met with a counselor, and she recommended that I apply here, here, and here, and I got in a number of schools. And I applied to Ohio University, and although I meant Ohio State, I wanted a smaller place, mm -hmm. but I ended up at Wisconsin. Yeah. It was beautiful. We, I came with my mother on this tiny little airplane to look at it. And, um, and so what did you uh, major in? English mm -hmm. and rhetoric. English and rhetoric and? Uh -huh. So two, two majors. Uh -huh. And the rhetoric, tell me, I don't know what... It was so much fun. I loved it because it was um, speech and rhetoric. We took courses like rhetoric of campaigns and revolutions. You know, so you'd learn about all that oratory that occurred in churches. It was very political. And um, then we had groups that learned about nonverbal communication. We had very small groups of people who met together. Um, and we analyzed each other's speech and interactions. So it was very person to person. I loved it. It was wonderful. Do you think that it uh, uh, helped you in your adult life because you've had to give a lot of speeches in the different areas? It wasn't had. the kind of speech and rhetoric that, um, it wasn't oratory where you yourself go in front of audiences, although I applied to grad school in it and went to the University of Pittsburgh and that's exactly what it was, which was, I only stayed a year. I never finished that. Uh -huh. But, um, so you went to Madison, and how was Madison? I don't know what years I had. I can't figure it out by your I, well, I graduated Madison in 69, so mm -hmm. I must have begun in 64. Mm -hmm. And what was going on in the 60s? <laughs> so we went to Madison, and you go and you, uh, you start school wearing these button-down sweaters and short skirts and knee socks, and you're walking up Bascom Hill in the bitter winters in knee socks, you know? Mm -hmm and your button-down sweater and your short skirt. And over time, it began with Dow coming to campus, Dow Chemical, and there were some sit-ins on the hill, on Bascom Hill. Mm -hmm. And they were very peaceful sit-ins right outside the law school, which going up Bascom Hill is on the left. And um, there wasn't a whole lot of response from the university or from Dow Chemical. And as the non-response became louder, the students became louder. Mm -hmm and there became more picketing and the university didn't react well to it. And all over the country, everybody started protesting the war. So Madison was a hub for anti-war protests. You'd go, eventually they brought in troops in school buses and they'd be lining Bascom Hill. You'd walk up the hill and they'd be standing there in full gear with their bayonets which students would sometimes put flowers in, and you'd go to that. I, we were tear gassed in the library. We were tear gassed outside of University Hospital. When you say we, does that do you mean yourself? Yes. Were you one of those protesters? Mm -hmm. I was not real active, although I was there and. Well, you must. Have, yeah, you must have been there, or you wouldn't have gotten gassed. Right. Right. So. And Bill. My husband, Bill, right. was in med school at that time. Um, that must have been my senior year that that happened. And he was helping in on something called the Blue Bus, which was um, residents, or no, he was in med school. Medical students were working in the Blue Bus, just giving care to students. It wasn't related to the riots, but one night he was in the Blue Bus, and there was a riot going on, and the police were coming by and started clubbing the Blue Bus. And they had a scythe. Mm -hmm. in the blue bus because somebody was a gardener mm -hmm. and Bill was like terrified that you know, about, yeah, that what was going to happen but you just, you just got embroiled in it no matter what you know it was a very heady time it yeah, was okay. interesting and when I went to grad school that's when the bomb bombing of Sterling Hall occurred mm -hmm. so I was in Pittsburgh when that occurred mm -hmm. and that kind of on top of Kent State and the other terrible violence that occurred kind of quieted the movement, you know, after Sterling Hall, it kind of it quieted down, but it began my freshman year and escalated through the years. Do you think that your involvement, or you say you were involved, but to me you were somewhat involved if you were there where they were doing gas, so you were involved. 
Do you think, did you, were your parents or your grandparents or your relatives, were they involved, were they politically, at the, at the dinner table, what, what was your conversation as a girl growing up? We never talked about that kind of stuff. My, later, when we were like sentient adults, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, then we would have conversations. We were extremely liberal. Mm -hmm. My father always voted Republican when I was in sixth grade mm -hmm. in, the mock re in the mock election at my school. I went to a private school. I'll get back to that. Yeah. But um, I voted for Eisenhower mm -hmm. because I was my daddy's girl. Right. <laughs> of course. I understand yeah. my father was also a Republican. Yeah. yeah. Right. But then later he ended up voting. He voted Democratic as he got older, uh -huh. which was interesting. Uh, why did you go to a private school? I, I don't know. We what just, kind of private school? Was it was associated, connected with the University of Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and it was called Falk Elementary School. It still exists. And it was a small class. I was with the same group of people, mostly, with some people coming in, some people weaving their way out. Um, f junior nursery through eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And the, um, Jonas Salk's sons went there. We were experimented on. Recently, I was in Pittsburgh for Passover. I know. You, know, you don't think about it when you're a child. You just go along with what happens. So periodically, every year, we would all be lined snaking our way down into the gym and there would be a table and they'd be taking blood and I think we must have gotten an injection. There were mats laid out for the kids who fainted and over Passover a man was at the table who just did a film on this kind of, that the salt vaccine was, I don't know if we even got the salt vaccine, I don't know what we got, but um, I'm really healthy. Well, your parents obviously <laughs> had to sign a release. No, I asked him about that, and he really? said at that time there weren't releases. You just did you things. Just, yeah, I, you just, just things happened. You make an agreement with a scientist. We were connected with the University of Pittsburgh. And kind of shocking, isn't it? It is when you think back on it. But again, I didn't think about it for decades, not till I was, again, that sentient adult. Uh huh. You know, uh -huh. who could reflect on that. Um, how did you meet Bill? We were fixed up as a senior and I was a senior in college and he was a freshman, a first year med student. Mm -hmm. Who fixed you up? Anybody from, he's a Milwaukeean, right? He is. Rita Babbitt's, Dr. Babbitt's daughter, Rita. Rita recently died like two years ago, uh -huh. but Rita fixed us up because I was in the dorm with her and she knew Bill from Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. So you, you met and when did you get married? Years later. Really? So, we, so you, went to, cause you went back home to go to school, right? I did, University of Pittsburgh. And then what happened? Then I came back to Madison. And you got married? Eventually. We, we met like in 68, so mm -hmm. we got married in 71. It's not really that long. No, it isn't. Given how long our kids date without getting married now. Oh, sorry, kids. <laughs> we got kids, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. But, um, so you got married in 1971. And where, he, when did he finish school and where did you live? Did you live elsewhere? Did he do residencies elsewhere? In right, or right. What? We got married, I believe, his senior year of med school. So we lived in Madison in a small apartment above um, this man who sold Archway cookies. So we always got our supply of Archway cookies. And then he did his residency, his internship, preceptorship in La Crosse, Wisconsin mm -hmm. for a year. Mm -hmm. And then he went to Women's McGee Hospital in Pittsburgh. So we were in Pittsburgh, I was going to say home, mm -hmm. for three years. And I taught school because, oh, I, in that time that I came back, I didn't complete the master's in Pittsburgh, right, Pittsburgh, but I came back and got a master's degree in special ed. It was called behavioral disabilities. Mm -hmm. And then I taught special ed in Pittsburgh and a little bit here in, oh, in Madison when right. we moved back. Right. So we went from Madison to La Crosse to Pittsburgh and then Bill got a job in Madison at Dean Clinic. We mm -hmm. went there before we ended up moving to Milwaukee. How long were you in Madison? Ten years. No, that's a long time. Mm-hmm. So mm -hmm. you have children? We do, three. And where were they born? Madison. And what are their names? Molly. Molly. Jacob and Abby. Okay. And what are they doing today, those three? 
kids. They are really special. Of course. Yeah, no, they really are. <laughs> <laughs> um, Molly is a family nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. and she's in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and she's working at a Planned Parenthood. Um, she's a really cool girl, very kind. And um, Jacob is lives in New York. He ended up getting a master's in Jewish education. And um, or he calls it something else. I got a master's in Jewish education too. I went to school forever. I had How many my master's do you have? two okay. plus 60 credits in early childhood development and language mm. development. So I have 60 credits there. Not that it does me any good because when I was talking to somebody about language acquisition, they said, oh, they don't believe that anymore. I thought, well, that went out the window. But um, so Jacob lives in New York, and he works for a group called Stora, S-T-O-R-A-H, Telling, which oh, is, yeah, it's a wonderful group. Yeah. There's, um, a, it's a way to introduce people to Torah and to Jewish learning through through song and midrash and storytelling, mm -hmm. yeah. So he he was working. I don't know what his position was, but a, in an administrative position, plus going out to different sites and doing things. And then mm -hmm. he recently quit that because he wanted to become more active in gay rights. Mm -hmm. He's very upset with the inequality that's occurring in this country mm -hmm. you know, with gay marriage and or the lack of commitment toward gay marriage and um, he's with a, he began a group with some other people called Queer Rising. I don't love the name Jake but I understand it. So it's supposed to be an inclusive group where um, it's just it's for gay as in lesbians and transgender it's just reclaiming the term queer and it's representing them on various levels whether it's um, re relationships with the police, whether it's with the Marriage Act, whether it's with insurance, and they're trying to bring it to the forefront through um, what nonviolent mm -hmm. protest, mm -hmm. which I'm well aware of as we talked about. Mm -hmm. And your daughter and Abby. And Abby lives in Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. and she is eventually finished and got a degree in I say eventually finished, Abby, because you went to Australia for three years. That's a long segue there. So she went, <laughs> she finished in sustainable agriculture, mm -hmm. and she has a large garden, and she's working on, she makes, how do I describe it? She makes her own beer. Mm -hmm. She makes lotions and potions from plants. She's involved with a group where she's learning how to make boats and bows and arrows and follow animals and how to process quote unquote animals. She knows how to milk goats and clean intestines and um, interesting. Yeah, back to the earth. Back yeah. to the earth. Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 she's amazing. Yeah. How interesting. You do have interesting children. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So you well, you moved to Milwaukee then when? In I just asked Bill that. So we figured out Abby was four, so probably 1986. Oh, you haven't been here all that long. No, no. But you're so, tell me how you got so involved. Well, when we lived in Madison, I was extremely involved with Women's American Ort, mm -hmm. which was a small chapter and ended up being president of Ort in Madison. Mm -hmm. And when I came to Milwaukee, Abby Garfinkel sure. had been quite involved with Ort and she found out about me mm -hmm. as she has her wiles and mm -hmm. did and so she contacted me and I got involved with the women's division that way and I think I started with political awareness um, probably. probably with political awareness and also got involved with the um, Jewish Community Council under it was either Paula or Jane I mean, um, not Jane, Judy Mann. Oh, you mean so, the Milwaukee Jewish Council? The Milwaukee Jewish Council right, under right. Judy Mann. So mm -hmm. I think I was on the council board for a while. And I was on, and I was on the, um, 
You were on the Hillel House, it says. Yeah, I was on the Hillel House board. I've been on a lot of boards. What else have you? Because we only have those two, a past member, board member of Milwaukee Jewish Council, ORT. Mm -hmm. Women's American Art. And then I became, when I came here, I became somewhat involved in ORT and helped with their annual um, luncheon where they honored somebody, their honoree luncheon. Mm -hmm. So you, you And then I was also on the board of the, um, oh my God, this, what's the social service agency? JFS. JFS mm -hmm. for a while. And I'm on the Temple Board, and I'm co-chair of the Social Action Committee currently. And I'm on Tikkun, 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 Tikkun Ha'ir's uh, oh, ha -ear. board, Tikkun mm -hmm. Ha'ir, Repair the Cities board. Right. All right, that one's been, that started with Emmanuel in Lake Park Synagogue. It was yeah. just a little dinky thing. It was, I know, those rabbis yeah. began it. Yeah. yeah, it was very nice. David yeah. Fine and uh, Rabbi Berkson. Yes, uh -huh. yes. And now it's becoming something. It is. It's growing in importance and um, yeah. and their ability to accomplish things. Yeah. yeah. So you became active at the Federation and, um, you know, so if we're 2000 and what are we, 10? Um, but, oh wait, I want to ask you, were you involved, have you been involved in the non-Jewish community here in Milwaukee? Not a lot, but recently... Did they try and get you? Yes. Like COA and, and... I am on the COA board. There you go. See, did I guess? <laughs> how do you I know guess? that? I, I don't know. know. How do you know that? I'm just guessing. That's very good. Uh-huh. Good radar. Yeah. So, what else? Um, just the COA board. Uh -huh. in terms of non-Jewish, but I, I'm thinking I might want to make a little foray into that. Into the non-Jewish world? Yeah. Because you feel you've accomplished, well, you have Well, I might, I'm pretty narrow in terms of just being in the Jewish community, I and there's that. this whole world. world. Mm -hmm. What area would you be interested in becoming involved in beyond COA? Children, literacy, well, pregnancy? Well, I have a the master's in Jewish education. I worked at the JCC for over 20 years mm -hmm. as the Jewish family educator. Right. And um, I have mommy and me classes mm -hmm. and uh, Holland community classes and planning the Passover, not the Passover program. Yeah. Yeah, it was the Passover program, the citywide Passover program. And just various things. So I think I might like to be re-involved with children, mm -hmm. um, but I also care deeply about the environment, yeah. So, and I care about the water, and I care about what's happening in the city, so there's some organizations I've been going to, a couple meetings. Which ones have you been going to? I knew you were going to ask that. Okay, um, I think it's called the, like the Water, Con Milwaukee Water Conservancy, or, or Conserv yeah. something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I'm sure they can use some, some smart women involved in it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, you've gone to Israel? Yes, multiple times. Yeah. Did, you went, uh, you were on a mission, it was a doctor's mission, I think you and Bill were on, weren't you? Not a doctor's mission, it was a federation mission, and there were a lot of doctors and dentists on that. Were, were you on that one? We went on the Akarai mission. Oh, that, that was, was the, the leadership? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it was. The people were pretty young. Mm -hmm. It was, um, I don't even know how, it had to be in the early 90s. Yeah, because we haven't yeah. done that for a long time. And that was a fabulous trip. Yeah. And then Bill's sister Janice lives in Israel. Mm -hmm. So we go... Frequently. Well, I go more frequently than Bill. Mm -hmm. We're talking about going this winter mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever spend time there, like on a kibbutz or anything like that? No, I, that sounds like a, a wonderful thing to do. I Bill know. and I are a little bit going to be a little bit more footloose, you know, so I'll just add it to my list of things we could do to is spend a couple retire? months. When is this going to become noted? <laughs> He's talking about it, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. Well, we won't put it out in the news to all his patients. <laughs> we won't let the patients know that he's thinking about yeah, it. He is. Well, you have to think about it before you do it. Right, you know. he's talking about being retired. Well, you know, you get, you get there. Um, I mean, who, who was a role model for you? as a Jew. Hmm. Who, is there one person that you, you know, I mean like certain things uh, you can say, oh, I set my table like my grandmother because that was always important to me, or my mother always told me this or that, or my aunt said, that, you know, is there somebody that 
Well, in terms of lifestyle and the way you live your life, mm -hmm. I would say my parents. Yeah. You know, caring about people, being active in community, um, being good people. Um, so that role model. We always lit Shabbat candles every Friday mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. In terms of learning, when I came here, I started learning with a Tarek Cohn, and that was a big door that opened for me. Yeah. That was fabulous. She influenced a lot of people. She really her did. Bible course. I did. She did, and eventually I became a B'nai Mitzvah at Sinai as an adult, nice. and then I got my master's in Jewish education through mm -hmm. Cleveland College of mm -hmm. Jewish Studies, which, mm -hmm. when I did it, was Siegel College. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that influence occurred because of the Tarot. Who was in your class at Cleveland College? Do you remember? Oh, sure. Kathy Heilbrenner. Uh huh. And Moshe Katz, uh -huh. and myself, and Aggie Goldenholtz, mm -hmm. and um, oh my goodness, who else? Carol Levinson. I don't know who that is. She has taught in the schools and taught at the day school, and there's a couple of people who moved to sh sh Chicago. Roz Wagner was in that class. Um, she, they moved away too, and. Um, so it's interesting. Out of Karen that, Torm. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that out of that class are people who are extremely, the, the ones that are still here are, are involved people. Yes. Today. It was a wonderful program. Yeah. Yeah. It was very special. What was, you, what was your favorite involvement, would you say? What did you really, I mean, from this minute, I'm not talking about you're going to move on. I can feel it. I hear it. You're going to be doing other things. But looking back, since you moved to, let's say since you moved to Milwaukee, what was your favorite oh. activity, do you think? The women's division, probably. Did you enjoy being president? I did. Were you campaign chair? I, I was. Uh -huh. Because normally you're two years as campaign chair, you take a year off, and then you have two years as president. I did three years as, pre right. as president. Well, you just finished. I did. And uh, I'm trying to control my grit. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, you went you were president during a... a very difficult transition time. Well, it was a transition, but it was it was good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good. We're on a new path. Right, but with you know, you're, I know how much you think of Evie, yeah. and you know that whole her retirement and everything. That was a huge, a huge change for that for the women's division. I think, mm -hmm. in, in all ways, it was. What do you think is? What do you think uh, is the future of the women's division? Do you feel that the young women are, that there are, it's going to be uh, as rich and as good? I'm, ho I'm hoping it will be. The women's division is going through a strategic planning process where we're looking at seven critical issues. What we're are gonna, the issues? Do you remember? Don't we're get, uh, how do we raise more money? How do we become more centered with the Federation. How do we attract more people? Mm -hmm. um, those kind of things. You know, what would attract people? Who's in charge? Who's uh, the chair of that? Overall? Well, um, Lauren Hoffman is the director right, of the women's right. division, but then um, it, was, it was Andrea Schneider mm -hmm. and Lori Roth and myself, Susan Angel Miller, mm -hmm. Um, but we're going to be setting up teams, work groups, and each work group is going to have two leaders mm -hmm. with a subgroup of maybe 10 people who will be discussing each one of these issues. It's going to be a great way to involve people. There are a lot of young people still on the women's division board who are involved. You know, there's always the fear that you're not going to be attracting young people. I know. They say that. But, I but it, it, for me, they come. Yes. You know, build it and they will come. Mm -hmm. You know, you just need to make it important to them and worth their while and um, educate them to the great needs that occur in the Jewish, that are occurring in the Jewish community locally and overseas. How, how has a federation changed since you became involved, would you say? Hmm. When I first became involved, I remember going to board meetings, federation board meetings, and women, 
how to express this Just nicely. Express you can women express weren't treated as nicely as men were. Sometimes women would speak and their comment would be brushed over. You know, you would listen to somebody and then they'd go to the next person. It was a non, I'm good on nonverbal. It was a nonverbal diss, mm -hmm. you know, or the women weren't chairs of that many committees. Now women are everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and there have always been women chairs of, women presidents of the Federation. We've had very strong women in the community, but it's, women are more generally men and women together now work within the Federation. More equal. It appears more equal. I think it could be a little bit more equal. Mm -hmm. You know, I, but um, there's that. And in terms of the Federation, it's changed drastically because of the economy right. in the last few years, right. you know, as we're calling it the new normal. You know, so it's a paring down of staff and program. And having leaner programs. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think the wheel that the Federation has is still valid. That, you know, you, the important goals are outreach, education, planning, fundraising. You know, I think those are still goals. Um, community they, building. Community building. And that's why I think the Women's Division was one of my best experiences because of the community building and the ability to interact with women and create something together. Mm -hmm. You know, I love it. I love when people get together, put their minds together, and come out with a product that is just stellar. Mm -hmm. You know, that's exciting and, and it paves new roads and you make a difference, that you mm -hmm. touch more people. Right. So I, um, in the women's division, I think versus the Federation, I think it's not as staff driven because the women are so hands on. We always, I think the women always were. Yeah. You know, the men, with all due respect to the men, I, th I think the men always had secretaries. I mean, I'm going back a long time mm. now. They had secretaries who did a lot of things for them. Um, and I think that they kind of expected it. This is what I saw when I haven't worked here. That's interesting. Yes. Well, like, um, when I talk to some staff, when there's a women's event, we have multiple meetings, we talk about all aspects of it, down from what the table's going to look like to what is the program going to be, and is this program going to be a program that attracts both young women and older women. Mm -hmm. You talk about the nuances of it and what are your goals, and she said, and this staff person then said she was planning another program where they called and said, is it done yet? Mm -hmm. You know, so that there's a vast difference and in that way there's an advantage to the women's division in this time of cutback and leanness because the women step up. Yes, they do. They're used to it, you know, so I hope that keeps occurring. With younger women working, you know, it is a new day. There are new realities. Yeah. You know, there are more people working and um, need time for their family. So we need to be careful, or they need to be careful on what they choose to do, that it's meaningful for them. What's the um, proudest, what are you proudest of in your life, Heidi? My children. Yeah. <laughs> that was a given, right? Yeah. Um, of your own I'm proud, I'm just proud that I've been, I guess, that I've been able to do things for the community. And that, I guess I'm proud that I've continued to learn, that I'm open to learning and doing. Mm -hmm. And right now the struggle, you know, without the women's division, with Bill possibly retiring, is, you know, what is our future? What is our goal? I've been thinking about this lately. You're a goal person. Well, Are you, you want a list maker? I, sometimes I make lists, yeah, because it's really wonderful checking them off. But, um, you know, living that life worth living. You know, you know maybe, let's say I have 20, 25 years left. You know, t how do you spend that time? Yeah. What do you do with that time? I need to give myself permission to be able to read without feeling guilty during the daytime. You know, that's not something I do. That's just like, <gasps> you, know. you don't? No, because it's, um, I read at night. Oh, you funny. If I were home, I'd be reading all day. I know, but is that 
Is that I, I, I have to get my head to the point where I can say, that's okay, that's really good to lead a life like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I have to figure out what I'm going to be doing. And um, Are you folks active in the arts, in any of the uh, arts in town? I mean, as far as, you maybe, you know, make a donation or something, but I mean, um, are you... Do you attend them and do you go on a regular basis? And if so, which are they? Well, we belong, we have, um, we have season tickets to the Renaissance Theater, which we all really like, mm -hmm. Bill and I. And then um, we go to a number of plays during the year. This past year, we went to the symphony. Um, we're going to maybe try some pops next year. Uh -huh. Bill says it's a great way to sleep. You know, so I need to, he's best when he um, is familiar with the music, uh -huh. you know, because if he's not, then it is, it's very soothing. And um, I like the museum, and for a while we belonged to the Contemporary Art Society, and I'm thinking about rejoining that. We, mm -hmm. I collect a lot of odd art, contemporary, mm -hmm. odd art. Mm -hmm. Are you a docent there? Or you I am not. No. Do you have any desire to be? No, I don't. No. no. Okay. Is there something about you that you think no one knows? That's one of our little questions that I think is kind of... I read comic books. Do you really? I do. Which one? <laughs> oh, I have a... I have a there are about 30 of them. Yeah. Yeah, there are about 30 different ones. There's some wonderful graphic novels and writers out there. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's... um, And they're interesting, the comic books, you know, because they can be fanciful or they can be philosophical or they can be superhero ones. I'm not into superhero that much. I stopped at Archie and Veronica. You did. Yeah. <laughs> they just had a fantasy where Archie first married Veronica and then he for then he married Betty. It was oh, just no. sort of like I know not not in real life. Oh no. I know. I Whether you know he's gonna have to make a decision soon. Yes, he is. Is there, <laughs> is there anything you wanted to talk about that we didn't that we didn't cover? Something about your grandparents or your aunts or um, um, your kids or anything that um, you know? A lot of times people leave here, I and they say, "Oh, darn it! I wanted to talk about Aunt Rose or something." Uh, um, are you a cook, by the way? Do you cook? I love cooking, yeah. baking, cooking, baking, cooking and baking. Who taught you? Your mother. I used to cook with my mother, yeah. And that's a nice way to do it. Yeah. I used to watch her. cook with you? They did, and now they all like cooking. Uh -huh. My children, too. They all like cooking, which is really nice. I used to watch my mother. She hooked that, when she made the chopped liver, she hooked that metal thing to the sure. table. The grinder. The grinder and mm -hmm. the chopped liver or the um, gefilte fish would come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my sister's very involved in community, too. Is she? She is extremely. She's involved with the ACLU. And Where is she? She's in Pittsburgh. My mm -hmm. brother's in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I went to a... You know what's interesting is that even though I wasn't involved in synagogue and, and I went to the Falk School and I never thought it was Jewish, but looking back on it, almost all the students were Jewish. And the camp I went to... All the campers were Jewish. It wasn't a Jewish camp. It, of course, had one of those Indian themes. Sure. But um, so I've been surrounded by Jewish people my whole life. And so now you're thinking about kind of. But Cherry's really broadly in the community. My sister. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's something to be said for that. Uh huh. Well, you, as you said, you've got at least 20, 25 years to to do that next. I'm well, hoping. Put in in the Jewish community because we yeah. can never. We wouldn't want to, to go on about our business here without you, ID. <laughs> that's so that's, nice. It's true. That's so nice. It's true. Everybody but, feels that way about you. Oh, that's so nice. That's nice. So, um, how would you like to be remembered? Do you want to leave a message for your children? You gave a couple here while um, we were talking. Um, live a good life. Be good people. Give to others. Um, care about your world, which you already do. I'm really proud of you, really proud of you, and um, it right. makes me, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Then you make me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anybody with tears. Mm. Thanks, Heidi.